In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this, and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities, I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes and one bread made from countless grains, so also being many, we being many are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to him, imploring him for the sake of his son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Please. O almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor, sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. 
Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Be it, far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him is salvation, life and resurrection from the dead. By him we are redeemed and set at liberty. But be, far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him is salvation, life, and resurrection from the dead. By him we are redeemed and set at liberty. Glory be to God on high, and on earth is the world for men. We praise you, we bless The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive this sacrament of your body and blood, that the fruits of your salvation may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The first lesson from Maundy Thursday is written in the second book of Moses, known as Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to set commemorate for the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is written in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. My flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer garment clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, that's tonight. That's what we celebrate tonight. In this time of the church year, these weeks of the church year where we slow down our celebration to real time, and we take the same amount of time that it was between Palm Sunday and this night and Friday and Sunday morning. Of course, we recount what happened on this night when our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed. We recount what happened this night every single week. We hear every Sunday, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed. But on this night, on this night, Jesus did more, in fact, than celebrate the Passover with his disciples and institute his Holy Supper for his disciples and his whole church. In fact, St. John records in his gospel account in great detail what, Jesus, what else Jesus said and did in the upper room on that night. It's recorded in John's gospel from chapters 13, where we began this evening, all the way through chapter 17. In chapter 13, as our gospel said, we had Jesus washing his disciples' feet in humility and exhorting his disciples, commanding them to love one another. In chapter 14, we have Jesus promising, in my Father's house are many rooms and I go there to prepare a place for you, Jesus said. And though he's going away, his disciples wondering, where are you going with? Where is the way to the Father? And Jesus responds, I am the way and the truth and the life. Later in chapter 14 and on into chapter 15 and 16, Jesus preparing to depart from his disciples promises them a helper the Holy Spirit, who will come after him and remind them of everything that he has told them. We'll hear those chapters, especially during the Sundays after Easter. And then there's John 17. Jesus' high priestly prayer, it's sometimes called, where Jesus on the night in he was betrayed, prayed for his disciples, but not just for them. He specifically says, not just for them, but for all those who will believe in me through their message. In other words, you. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed had you on his mind and on his lips of prayer. Tonight I would like us to give our attention to words we don't usually hear in the Sunday Gospels from John chapter 15, also on this night, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does, not, that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. 
By this the Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. Jesus commands his disciples. You may have seen, read, heard, that the term Maundy Thursday most likely comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means command, from Jesus' command to love. Of course, we love because he first loves us. Jesus loved you, loves you, even shows you now the full extent of his love St. John said, giving up himself, giving even his own life for another, for you. And then he commands in response, love one another. Well, do you? Love one another as I have loved you loved one another to the full, sacrificing yourself, your wants, your needs, your desires, all for the good of another. And even for another who may not deserve such love, someone who does not return such love, even your enemy, at best, we want to. We intend to. Maybe even try to. But we do not do, indeed cannot do. Why? Jesus teaches us that he is love. Love comes from him. And that if we cannot love, it is because we are not in him or he in us. Jesus teaches us that by, that by way of an extended metaphor here in John 15, a, a, a comparison of us and him to plants. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The life and the fruit of a plant is dependent upon its connection to the vine, to the trunk, to the roots of that plant, its basic botany. Water and nutrients need to be delivered to the extremities of the plant, its branches and its leaves, which in turn produce growth, leaves, fruit, and flowers. But if those branches are cut off, then life is cut off from it and the leaves wither and the flowers fall. Likewise, if Jesus' disciples are cut off from Jesus, they die. And the life that was in them dries up, hardens, decays. 
And that's why Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. The writer to the Hebrews says it this way, without faith it is impossible to please God. Or St. Paul to the Romans, everything that does not come from faith is sin. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus commands his disciples to love one another. And he warns them, he warns his disciples, his own, that if they are separated, if they are cut off from him, they cannot bear fruit, love, and good works. And even they, his own dear disciples, if they bear no fruit, they will be cut off. And they will be thrown into the fire and burned. So we should ask ourselves then, what does this mean to remain in him? What does it mean to abide in him? Jesus says, if you would remain in me and I in you, then he will bear much fruit. Like a branch is to the vine, I am his and he is mine. But what does that connection mean? Connected how? Well, in a plant, you have these these channels that run in every trunk, branch, called xylem and phloem. These pipes like straws that transport water and nutrients from the roots to the branches and energy back down to the roots, channels for the necessary elements of life to flow from root to branch. However, if those are cut off, it all stops and the plant dies. So we would ask, by what channels does the life and the love, the holiness and the righteousness of Christ, Jesus our Lord, flow from him to us, like sap from the root? His cleansing forgiveness his victory and his power over sin and death without which we die. Jesus has told us. He says, already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And then he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, The living word of Jesus is the means by which we may abide in him. We abide in him when we remain in his words. That means to hear them. But not just to hear them with the ears and them to vibrate our eardrums, but that we would also receive these words, that we would learn these words, keep these words, and believe them. When we learn to treasure his words above all else and to find our life, our security, and our confidence, and our joy in his word. And that includes the words by which Jesus, on this night, instituted a meal which was in fulfillment of another meal, the Passover, this meal in which we receive with our own mouths and with our own bodies the body and the blood of him who died. In order that we might participate in his death and become beneficiaries of his death. This too is a channel for his life to flow into us. For Jesus even says, the whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Understand what that means. 
you receive tonight the body of the crucified one. And in his body you are united. You be, share it with him in his death. His death in the body on the cross. So then, when you come to church tomorrow, and you hear again about the suffering and the death of Jesus Christ, what you are hearing and what you are seeing is your death. That's your suffering for sin, and there is to be no other because on the cross it is finished. And sin is done. And death is dead. And because you remain in him, he also remains in you. And the love, the manifestation of his, the fruit of our salvation, the love of Jesus Christ to its fullest extent, which you see demonstrated on the cross, this is the love that also now flows through your vein and is pumped by your heart. The fruit of Jesus' salvation is therefore manifest in you. By his word, by his sacraments, the love of God to save sinners, to love even his enemies, love to the loveless shown. That is what flows through these channels from Jesus to you. And it bears fruit. Because Jesus Christ gave himself to you freely, fully. Now you are at liberty. You are free to give of yourself to others. You sing your chords of love, my Savior, bind you to me forever. I am no longer mine. Now abiding in him and his word and his love. Now everything done in faith is pleasing to God. So as you look at your life and you look and it seems like, well, you don't show love as you ought, or you still fail time and time again, Jesus says to you, abide in me and let me deal with that. You are free and you are whole, you are complete. You no longer have to, to sweat the details about this or that that is pleasing to God and what isn't, what you should have done, what you should be doing better. All of that flows away from you. All of your failures, all of your insecurities, all of your doubts flows away from you onto him and what he does for you, for all, the fullness of his love and forgiveness constantly is flowing to you. And so God doesn't need your good works. Your neighbor does. And now the love that God channels to you, now you are free to allow that to, to bubble up in you and now pour out upon those around you. And so Jesus is able to produce a harvest of righteousness in us who are in him. If you want a plant to produce fruit, you can't make that happen by pulling on its leaves. If you want people to produce the fruits of faith, of love, and good works, they are never produced by force or clever tricks or by yelling at the branches to get them to grow or to love. These fruits only come in their proper season from branches connected to the vine, the trunk, the roots. They only come from hearts which abide in Jesus, in his word, 
in his flesh and blood, Jesus' word and sacraments instituted by his words therefore are the very center of our life together. It is our life. And our love for each other and our neighbors around us is the fruit of that life together. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join now in confessing the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty,
We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have remembered your congregation and have set for us who are upon the earth a holy table and instituted this blessed sacrament. We thank you, the only sacrifice for our sin, that you yourself are our Paschal Lamb and that you give us your body to eat and your blood to drink by means of which you seal unto us the riches of your grace. Lord, the bread which we break is the communion of your body, and the cup which we bless is the communion of your blood. What shall we render to you for this goodness, in which you draw so near to us, and by which you establish such a divine and heavenly fellowship, in which we are united with you and the blessed Trinity? And inasmuch as you give us your body to eat and your blood to drink, you are in us, and we in you, as members of your body, deal so mercifully with us, and give to us all your merit and righteousness, and in you the Father himself accounts us as righteous, even as though we were like you, mediator of the new covenant, and through you the Holy Spirit dwells in us and quickens us to newness of life. Strengthen our faith and enliven our confidence, and grant, O Lord Jesus, that the older we grow, the closer our communion with you may be, so that at all times we comfort ourselves in your merit and satisfaction and remain members of you and in communion with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Live and dwell in us, Lord Jesus, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, and show yourself mighty to save and to make us holy and blameless, so that with clean hearts and pure lips we may willingly serve your holy name and as new creatures come to the full perfection by your mighty power. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, there life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord, of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the, Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, 
he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
the pit. I am like a man without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily upon me. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves. You have taken from me my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? I call to you, O oh Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you show your wonders to the dead? Do those who are dead rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave, your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders known in the place of darkness, or your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, O oh in the morning my prayer comes before you. Why, O oh Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? From my youth I have been afflicted and to death. I have suffered your terrors and am in despair. Your 